Well, that's a rude thing to hit the button right before we start. There we go. When last we left our routers, we were about to put them into GLBP Group 1. And again, we're going to use the IP addresses 172.16.23.1, 2, and 3, respectively, for routers 1, 2, and 3, or multilayer switch 1, 2, and 3. And we will be creating a virtual router with the IP address 172.16.23.12. The only addressing, or only commands I have on here, period, right now are the IP addresses that you're seeing. I haven't done any of the GLBP fun stuff yet. So let's go ahead and jump in here on Switch 3. I'll show you some options, some of which are going to look pretty familiar. GLBP, then the group number. If you're working at, on switches in your home lab and you do this and you don't see anything or you're doing interface VLAN 100 and there's, it tells you unrecognized command, you likely or probably do have a uh, switching platform that doesn't support GLBP. So we're going to go with GLBP1 here and some options that look familiar, authentication, IP, IP version 6, and you could take a deep breath because we're not going to do that in this course. <laughs> Still some IP version 6 anxiety out there. We're, we're working on that, but not in, not in this course. Uh, a way to set the load balancing method with load balancing. Preamp, we're certainly familiar with that. We need to see whether that's enabled or not here. With GLBP, we'll do that in just a moment. We have a priority level to set. We have some timers as well. And then waiting. We don't have a track option like we did with HSRP and VRRP. So we see gateway waiting and tracking those. So maybe we could do some interface tracking with that. We'll check that out later. Right now, we just want to get this up and running. And an interesting line here, an interesting option. Notice that GLBP 1 IP is actually a, a, a legal command. You don't have to specify the IP address of the virtual router. And you're already thinking, well, doesn't that really, you know, isn't that why we're here? <laughs> you know, where's that address aut automatically going to come from? Well, I'm going to give you the theory and then I'm going to tell you what my experience is so you know both. The theory is that you only need to configure the IP address of your virtual router on the AVG, whatever router you want that to be. And that router is going to tell the others, you know, hey, I know the IP address of the virtual router. Here it is. You don't have to have it configured. That's the theory. What actually happens in my experience is that the IP address does get passed around to the other routers in the group, but it just seems like convergence takes a really long time. Uh, I've seen that in production networks. I've definitely seen it in labs because I've worked with GLBP quite a bit here in a lab environment. And I'm telling you, it just you sit there and you just wait for convergence. And I would just go ahead, you know, how many more seconds does it take to type in an IP address? So my feeling is know that this is a legal command by itself, GLBP1 IP. Know that the theory says the AVG is the only one that really needs to have that configured on it. But what I do in the real world and what plenty of other people do is just go ahead and specify the address on all the routers. And that's it. And that's the only one I'm going to do right now. Now, we should still get some messages here pretty shortly regarding that IP address. But there's one thing I'm going to do here is introduce you to the show GLBP command. And I'm going to tell you point blank, there is a lot of information here. Uh, it's a little overwhelming when you look at it as a whole because half of it is about the AVG and the other half is about the AVF. And you've just seen, you know, group one state uh, speak. Let's try that again. It's gone from speak to active for GLBP. So, and then we've got another message there going from listen to active. I think there's one letter there you can't see, but that's okay. And you can see listen, and here's the arrow, and there's the active part of it at the end. So we're going to see all this. I'm not skipping that, believe me. But I just want to show you this command now so we can catch one or two defaults because there's one very important default we haven't mentioned. You know, is preemption enabled or disabled by default? And we're going to find out right now with show GBLP. And this is the information at the top that I was referring to that talks about the AVG. Once you get to the line that says there is one forwarder or how many ever forwarders you have, then you're talking about your AVFs, your active virtual forwarders. So right now we're going to concentrate in this video just on the AVG information. And you can see a lot of it looks awfully familiar. You know, here's the interface name, here's the group, here's a state. Here's how many state changes we've had. Those are really going to add up as we bring other routers into the mix, how long ago the state change was. 
the virtual IP hello and hold times, you know, they're even the same as the other protocols. They're certainly familiar, three and 10 seconds. Tells you when the next hello is going out. And then all of a sudden we run into a redirect time and a forwarder timeout. We'll definitely be spending time with those in another video here in the course. And there's what we're interested in right now. Preemption is disabled. Uh, also, just pointing out here, here's the default priority of 100. Here's the default weight of 100. And here are some thresholds, lower 1, upper 100. Uh, those are the ones that tend to really get people confused. We are going to take care of that in a lab in this section. Right now, though, we need to bring the other routers into the group. <clears throat> Pardon me. After we enable preemption on router 3, because we're going to do that for all of them. And I could copy and paste this little two-line config. I like to type it out, especially... As I'm learning new things in a lab, I like to type them out instead of using a lot of abbreviations or cut and paste. It just sticks with me better. And let's try that again. Preempt. I can feel that M key sticking. There we go. And now we'll go over to our other switch. I'm going to screw up here on purpose. Yeah, address cannot equal interface IP address. Don't try that. <laughs> because some people try to do the uh, the NAT interface sharing thing. You know, I'll take this IP address from my router and make it my virtual router IP and GLBP. Uh, and you cannot do that. So let's do a 12 there instead. Nice try, though. And a preempt. Now, this is not the fastest converging protocol I've ever seen. So I may end up running show GLP, so show <laughs> GLBP a couple of times here um, just to make sure everything has converged before we really start talking about it. So let's go ahead and do it right now. And while we get might get some messages here, but you see one thing, a couple things have changed. First off, preemption enabled. You do have a delay option on the preempt command. And you can set that if you want to. I didn't set it. I just did, you know, GLBP1 preempt. So that gave us a delay of zero seconds. A couple of things here have changed. We've got active as local, standby as 23.2. So router 2 has been chosen as the standby. It has a priority of 100. And what else has changed? Group members. Love this one. What this does it gives you the actual MAC addresses of the other routers and or multi-layer switches in the group. So the key here again is these MAC addresses aren't the ones being sent out in ARP responses. These aren't the virtual MAC addresses. You know the format of those. You know how that works. And I'm going to show you where you can see those in just a moment. And really it looks like everything else is finished cooking as far as the ABG choice goes. So let's go ahead and show you that brief option. Oh, no, that's brief. <laughs> that's really brief. And I know the uh, standby router IP address is hanging off the side there. I will show that to you. But this gives you information about your AVG and your AVF. And here's the key to knowing if you're actually on the AVG or not. If in this first line where you see a group number and then a dash next to under, excuse me, under FWD, which is for, short for forwarder, of course, if you have that dash there, that means this line is referring to the AVG. Makes sense, right? So here's the priority of the AVG, and it's active. And here's the IP address being used for the AVG, the virtual router address, that is. And which router is it? It's the local one. It's the one you're on. So this shows us just this output that we are on the, the AVG itself and the standby router is 172.16.23.2. All of the other information, I'm sure you've already guessed, is about the AVFs. And there are the virtual MAC addresses that are being handed out, and you can even see which router they belong to. So just by looking at this, we see there's a forwarder 1 is active, and here's the well-known MAC address. We see 0101, so we know the first two numbers of that are the group number. These last two numbers are the forwarder number itself. And that was local. You know, and it makes perfect sense because this is the first router we configured. 
forwarder 2 is listen, you can see the IP address follows the format you expect it to, and here's the active router IP address. Then with 3, 3 is in listen as well, and we've got the MAC address being handed out on behalf of that router, which is 23.1. So why does this one say active, the first one, and the other two say listen? Well, if we go to routers 1 and 2, we're going to see each one of those routers say, hey, my forwarder is the active one, and the other two are listening. I'm not just making that up either. Let me show you. So here we've got show GLBP brief on router 2. And you can see the top line is going to be about the AVG, and... Priority is 100. This is the standby router. Here's the IP address for the virtual router. Here's the IP address for the active router, the primary AVG, if you will. And here, standby router tells us it's local. But notice in our forwarders, again, that the local forwarder is being shown as active, and the other two are being shown as listen, the ones on routers 1 and 3. Okay. So here, for the information about the AVG from Router 1's point of view, you know, Router 1's just out of the mix, period. All it's doing is listening. It's listening to see if it needs to step in. But when you see listen here in the AVG line, then you know you are on neither the primary AVG nor the secondary AVG. And there's the virtual IP again. It shows you the active router, and it also shows you the IP of the standby router at the very end. So some good information there. But again, check this out. When it comes to the forwarders, the local one is shown as active, and the other two are shown as listen. That's what tends to get people a little bit confused. It's like, why am I seeing different active forwarders when I go to different routers? Well, the local router is always going to show its forwarder as active if everything is up and running. The listen just means that those other two hosts are listening to see if they need to step in and take over the load. You see what I'm saying? That's all that listen means. All three of our forwarders right now are up and running, but when you run show GLPP brief, you're only going to see the local one is active, and if everything's well, the other ones are going to be listed as listen. But they are all working right now. I think that's a little misleading when you first look at GLBP. It's like, well, forwarder three is shown as active on uh, this router on router one, but it's shown as listen on the other two routers. Again, it's always going to show as active on the local forwarder, and the others will be in listen mode. So we're hitting about the 13 minute mark on this video. I'm going to stop this one. When we come back, we're going to work with that priority a little bit and see what happens when one of our routers or more drops offline. I'll see you on the next video.